Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce. And in tonight's Einstein Analytics video, we actually have a channel first. Uh, we have a guest presentation. Um, I've done interviews before, but this is the first time that I've ever had somebody else who built something awesome in Einstein Analytics come on the channel and tell us about it. And I think this app is a real game changer. So we've got Matt Horvath with us, and he's going to tell us all about his EA Dashboard Helper Chrome extension. Uh, with that, I turn it over to you, Matt. Tell us all about it. Hi, Pete. Um, I actually started having um, frustrations with having to keep copying and pasting out the, the embedded SACL within the dashboard quite a few months ago when I had to, especially once binding was enabled, because you couldn't use the built-in editor anymore. So then I started thinking about other ways of improving it. So just improve my workflow because I found I spent a lot of time going in and out, modifying all the um, SQL queries in Notepad and then pasting it back in. And so I ended up creating a, a Chrome extension that allows you to modify all these so in, um, embedded SQL on the within the Chrome browser itself. So I can show a quick demonstration here. So all of the functionality is available from the JSON editor, so the standard control E. And clicking, once the Chrome extension is installed, you'll get this little window here, a button I should say. So when you click on that, it'll bring the side menu up. So it's going through quite a few iterations at this stage. Initially, it was only the SQL queries, which was my main um, frustration. So if I click on this, for example, you can see it brings up the SQL and I've highlighted the embedded, sorry, the, the binding queries here in, in red to highlight the fact that that's the part that's being bound. In addition to that, if you expand the SQL query itself, it'll also show you which widget is um, attached there. Clicking on these will allow you to jump to that section in the JSON as well quickly. In addition, any of these objects can be renamed by right-clicking on the actual section itself. So I've also moved all the widgets, the shortcuts down here, so all your short charts and text fill boxes, clicking on these will jump straight to them as well. And one of the recent additions I've had in there as well is um, on the static flex. So this allows you to, to modify these uh, values pretty quickly. So as you can see here as well, I've got a toggle on the data type for each column as well. So this one here has been specified as a number. You can overwrite this by clicking through the three different types of values to force it as a string or an object which also does uh, validations as well. So if I put in an X, for example, here, this will tell me that this data type is not valid for this number here. So we can fix that back up and change it that way, and you can note that the, the, data, is, the data type has been maintained. And so with that static step editor, do we have the ability to add additional rows and columns? Oh, yeah, sure. So, um, so you can add numerous rows, um, as well as adding a new column here as well. I haven't got any ability in there to modify the columns, uh, the column names once they're in there, but um, it does allow you to store, uh, yeah, to put put in the different values as well um, on the new columns straight away with the validation. Yeah, this is the kind of functionality I have wanted since the first time I built a grouping toggle and realized that the syntax I was going to need to pass was going to be different if I was putting that into a static step or a or a, uh, a compact step versus a SQL step. So this is a huge improvement uh, over current state. Current state, we have a, a very limited UI where we can create two column static steps 
Uh, it will make a guess at what it thinks our data type is based on the information we've input. But if it's something like US zip codes, it's going to interpret that as a number, even though that's actually a dimension. And if we need to go back and modify them, we don't have access through the UI and we must edit them through the JSON. So this is a really great improvement. And uh, you know, same thing for the, uh, the, the SACL query editor. Like I, I find myself often like having to have a cheat sheet of for each binding, what is a dummy value that I can replace that with. And I'll have to do massive find replaces on my dashboards to get back to the SACL editor. Or worse, I'll have to pull the whole thing out into Notepad++ or the text editor of your choice and have to do my edits there where I don't have the, you know, the color correction, I don't have the type ahead fields, um, I don't have the validation that I have uh, in the SACL editor. I can't just hit run query, run query and see what the output is. So being able to actually make these modifications uh, with with within the UI, even though this is more on the code side of it, it's really, really great for enabling us to get the job done quicker. Uh, so additionally, um, you know, at this point, uh, I'm gonna be showing a link on the screen right here where you can actually get to the plugin and install it for yourself. But Matt, can you talk a, a little bit about, uh, obviously this is an iterative process, and if people find bugs or want, you know, feature enhancement requests, uh, I believe there's an avenue to do that, right? Yes, so at the, um, on the actual Chrome extension page itself, the, the actual page where you install it from, there's just a little there to leave feedback as well as support. So if there are any issues or feature requests or anything, I'm happy to, to have a look at those. So, so yeah, so on this, this is the actual Chrome web store page itself so here under support this facility here, but any, no one's left anything so I'm assuming everything's good but <laughs> no news is no news is good news as they say but um yeah so that's that's the place there as well so I'll um, we can provide the link for that and as soon as we get off this call I'm totally tagging that Pete was here <laughs> So one more question that I have for you. Um, when we had talked about this previously, you told me about the mechanism by which you were able to kind of tap into this. And it, you know, for those of us that are a little bit more, you know, um, either tech savvy or in my case, just tech fond, uh, but not necessarily savvy. Can you tell us a little bit about ACE and how you were able to leverage that to build this extension? Sure. Because Originally, when I was looking at the code, and especially when I brought up the JSON editor, I, I noticed that um, the ACE editor was being used by Salesforce, which is like a JavaScript library for, you know, web-based code editing. And I, know, I noticed that that had been leveraged as well, and I noticed that the whole JSON data was available within the web browser. So it got me thinking if I could actually pick up that data within the Chrome extension or actually I must admit originally it was in, a, as in Firefox um, but no one no one at my workplace actually used Firefox they everyone uses Chrome and I look I, I, I have to admit it seems to run more efficiently um, Salesforce and Einstein within Chrome compared to Firefox but nonetheless I Notice that I could pick up the value of the, the JSON and I could parse it all within the Chrome extension and I could generate generate all the menu, you know, um, navigation down the left there easily enough from that parse JSON. So we've yeah, we've using the Chrome debugger to have a look at what was going on, I could pick up those values and modify it on the fly. Um, and so with the first cut I found it made my life a lot a lot easier uh, changing those queries without having to pop in and out of the JSON. But um, I know I use a few libraries in there um, to generate this tree as well and but it was definitely a huge learning um, for me as well around Chrome extensions. I've never created anything like that before. I, I know JavaScript, but not not how all these browser extensions worked. But hopefully, I've made some other people's life a bit easier as well. And of course, the ideal scenario would be 
all of this would be built into the interface itself and the maintenance of this would not be required any further, but it's my first contribution to the community. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, you know, we will, we will eventually see these kind of features come to the UI. Uh, I know that a lot of this is roadmapped and the product team is aware that, you know, these are things that we need and hopefully we'll get them all eventually. But in the meantime, this is an excellent uh, bridge to get over those functional gaps that, that still aren't quite there yet. So uh, thank you very much for, for sharing this with the community, uh, taking time to build it, taking time to appear on my channel. Uh, so for everybody out there, again, the link is on the screen right now and will be in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and hit me up if you think that you have something that you'd like to share on my channel. Uh, but that's all for now, so thanks for watching.